Welcome to another episode of Android Faithful, your, yes, you, your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the world of Android. From coast to coast, from California to New York, I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Michelle Rahman. <laughs> and down to Texas, sometimes China. We got, and... it, all over, we got it all over the map. So, yeah. <laughs> so this week is a little different. Like we talked about last week, we were not live streaming this week. In fact, this is pre-recorded. Michelle, Jason, myself, we're together here. We're recording Sunday night, uh, July 21st, uh, because we're all going to be gathering in New York on Tuesday, uh, the 23rd, uh, for an event at Google, of which we're so excited that we actually have an interview today on the show. We're going to have an interview on this show for you guys to enjoy. But there's so much been going on in the past week. We wanted to make sure we got together and covered off some of the major stuff, including Michelle. Your, you know, where in the world is Michelle Rahman? Your adventures <laughs> um, of where you've been for the past week. So um, Michelle so might fall asleep in the middle of this episode because he's been on China time for like six days. How are you doing, adjusting. Michelle? Are you all right? I'm doing kind of okay. Like I'm feeling a little bit of jet lag, but yeah, you know, it doesn't hit me that hard, thankfully. Yep. Yes. Like, you know, I got another flight tomorrow. So I know. Jeez. Uh, yeah. So, oh, so Google's got some exciting stuff coming around for Google Play. We're going to have a whole uh, update and breakdown on that later in the show, as well as well as an awesome interview um, with the general manager of Google Play, Sam Bright. Um, so we're really excited to be doing that. Um, but first, uh, let's get through what's been going on. And first and foremost, Michelle, you, 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 you were in China. Why were you in China, sir? So I was invited to China by Xiaomi to attend their, actually, it's like the Lei Jun Courage speech, where he basically spent the big chunk of the speech. It was like a full three-hour event talking about, you know, his idea for why they, the company wanted to launch an electric vehicle. Well, for those of you who, have, who don't know, China, uh, Xiaomi actually makes and sells electric vehicles in China, the Xiaomi SU7. And... um they talked about and they unveiled like a new concept version of that car with like a, a new engine. But of course, you know, this is Android faithful. We're here to talk about Android devices primarily and mobile devices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, half, before all that, did you get to ride in the car? I got to ride in the car. I okay, did post a right, video of it on okay. YouTube. Does it goes zero to 100 is... kilometers per hour in <laughs> 2.87 seconds, which oh is God. really, really fast. Does it have uh, Android Auto inside of it? No. Or Xiaomi <laughs> Auto, or I mean, it, the, the the in vehicle infotainment center that runs Hyper OS, which I believe is probably Android based. But there you, go. you know, it's so heavily customized; like it doesn't have Google Apps or anything because it's of course it's a China market, yep. like EV. Um, so I, I don't really know what's under the hood, but I, okay. I'm pretty sure it's probably Android based. Yeah. So it was a whole event about cars. Was there anything Android else at the at the event? Oh, yeah. The first half of the speech was about the cars, which was really impressive considering he spoke for like three hours straight. Oh, my God. Uh, the latter half was about wow. a whole bunch of new devices. We had a new foldable, book style foldable from Xiaomi, their fourth generation Mix Fold. We also had their first ever Mix Flip device, which I'll talk about next. Um, they also had the Redmi K70 Ultra. They also had a new smartwatch that doesn't run Android. They also had some new earbuds. And yeah, they also announced some other IoT stuff that actually I any, think it's a refrigerator store in China. I'll look forward to that vlog later. There's just okay. so much cool stuff that we don't get here in the US. Yeah. But Refriger- something that I did get. That's all I'm here for is the refrigerators. So just <laughs> yeah. let me know when that happens. Refrigerators. I saw some of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Tell us about some foldables. So the first foldable is the Mix Fold 4. Um, I'll talk about that first because I don't have that on hand but I did get to play around with it um, right before the launch event. And I actually got to compare it to the my existing device, the OnePlus Open. So the Mix Fold 4 is um, Xiaomi's fourth generation fo- book style foldable, and it is seriously light and thin. Like I think it's wow. like 9.8 millimeters, I believe, when unfolded. And uh, is, it, is, that inclu- when is that including the camera bump or no? Uh, no, it doesn't include the camera <laughs> bump. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I thought my book style OnePlus Open was already like, like the peak of foldable hardware after using it. And I, I, you know, I think a lot of us agree the OnePlus Open is an amazing device, mm-hmm. but the, the Mix Fold 4 just felt like in a league of its own. And I, you know, I know really? there are several, there are a few other devices that are supposedly as thin as light, but I have not been able to try those out. My, the Mix Fold 4 is the first such device that I've been able to try out. And wow. I am really looking forward and hoping it eventually launches globally. 
Um, wow, you really like, see the difference you can see in those, those like, right that here. You can see the hinge, difference, right? Yeah. So Dude, for, this for like audio tiny. listeners, Michelle, Michelle took some photos of the uh, mix fold next to the OnePlus Open, and the OnePlus Open looks chunky next next to yeah. this next to the Xiaomi Big phone. Yeah. that's amazing. That's wow. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also seriously lightweight. Like I was able to hold it pretty comfortably in one hand, and of course, it's too big when it's unfolded to actually use comfortably one handed. Yeah. But you can hold it one handed, and it doesn't feel like too heavy on your palm. And speaking of which. All the corners, all four corners of the Fold 4 are curved. So mm -hmm. even when you're holding it completely full, like closed shut or unfolded, it doesn't dig into your palms like some other foldables might. Like, yeah, I saw it here, right? Like yeah. with the Open, you get yeah, that that's, kind that's of like one of my gripes with the OnePlus Open. Totally, totally. And, and that looks really corners. seamless and nice and clear. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Yeah, since I don't have the device, I can't talk about the cameras or like the display quality or anything really else. I can just talk about as in just my brief 30 minute hands-on in phone hand field, feel. yeah. phone feel, yeah. And uh, one thing you'll notice if you're looking at the photos right now, um, audio listeners, obviously you, you're gonna have to look at the album that we'll share. Um, yeah, we'll put a, we'll put a link in, in the, the show notes to the album. Yeah, yeah. The camera bump, that is a seriously thick camera bump. Like they put some chunky cameras on this foldable. Um, I believe one of them is a 5X periscope, 10 megapixel sensor. Um, the main one is a, I think, 50 megapixel, and it has, it has four cameras. You know, I don't know off the top of my head the exact specs. You can read about my article, my article on AndroidFaithful.com that goes over all the specs and features of the Mix Fold 4 if you're interested. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if you are interested, you're unfortunately going to have to import one from China because this is not being <laughs> sold globally yet, unfortunately. What are, the, what, are the, uh, what are the odds of it rolling out globally? You know what I mean? Like, what, uh, how often does Xiaomi go down that road, you know? In they the have US, never they released don't. their foldables yeah. have never been released globally yet. Right, yeah. it's only been China market. Right, so it's interesting. Like we've in in the cohort of people that I was with are kind of speculating. You know, which of these two devices are they going to bring globally? Is it the Mix Fold Four or is it their new Mix Flip, which um, is the next device they announced? I think it's really exciting. It is a clamshell folding phone, aka what Win likes to call a flippable. It's <laughs> a really impressive device in terms of the cover screen which is massive it's a 4.01 inch completely takes up the entire front of the display um it has a pretty high resolution and also a massive battery inside i think it's 4780 milliamp hour battery wow that's bigger uh, flip, than this the battery in the galaxy z fold 6 yeah. bigger wow. than the battory yeah, for this form factor that's a that's xiaomi a 14 deal. that's wow. almost the same size capacity as in my oneplus open it's insane Wow. How much battery they packed into this thing? Well, yeah, the, in the, in in the article on AndroidFaithful.com that you put up about it, there's a photo yeah. of someone holding the phone flipped just on the front cover screen, and it's yes. big enough to be typing on the keyboard. Which on a on a flippable is it, it, that's the, you don't see that on a flippable a functional keyboard on that that's on right. the screen size space. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, let me talk about some of the um, front screen stuff that they've done. So you know, as you can tell. The issue with a lot of flippable phones is that you have these giant chunky cameras that takes up some of the space, right? So you can't obviously have a true full screen display. So what Xiaomi did, and actually let me switch over to my camera quickly so I can show you live because I do have this phone on hand with me. So All right. switch Hands over. On. I have the Xiaomi Mix Flip here. Uh, one thing they did is they partitioned this 4.01 inch display into right here where my finger's going across up to the camera. This is 3.5 inches diagonally, and this is like a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So this is where apps actually run. Versus right here mm. on the side is a widget panel that you can scroll um, through like various widgets, like a music, your clock, um, you know, etc. So I'll sell all the stuff that you can have. But here you can run full apps like Google Chrome, right? Like I'll keep Google AndroidFaithful.com, right? It's it looks really weird, yeah. right? Because it's this Yo, little tiny I see. I see. It's almost like the camera area is is outside. Yeah, the, of the camera app is like its own separate. Yeah, part but of that display. actually makes a lot of sense if it scales things appropriately there. Okay, and let me show you the, the the keyboard. And obviously, it's not taking up the full screen here, right? Yeah. But the cool thing is they it. added auto rotation support, so yeah, you can actually there you go. Yeah. There you go. So that like, looks yeah. nice. Android, and uh, unfortunately, this is the China market ROM. So it's using all like the China market software and of course the, the Chinese keyboard. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, you can't use Gboard on the outer screen for some reason, but 
you know, that's, you know, this, this one's not even being sold globally. If they do decide to sell it globally, um, they might add that. But yeah. yeah, some of the other stuff, like this thing is really cool. Like you can add up to 200 apps. If I unfold it and I go into settings, you can go to outer screen settings, outer screen apps. So there are a bunch of apps you can add here. I don't know the full list, but Xiaomi did say that they have, uh, they support 200 plus apps. So for example, even YouTube, <laughs> YouTube music. Half, the, up, half of those apps, we don't Google even know maps. what they are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> half these like A maps, a, little, a lot of Chinese market apps. Yeah, that of, only course, of course. That market. Yeah. Um, and of course, a bunch of first party Xiaomi apps like the recorder, et cetera, you can add. Just overall, yeah. I've been really impressed with the quality, the build quality of this device. The um, really nice. the form factor is super compact, just like the the Galaxy Z Flip Six. You know, you can do the same things. You can put it in like tent mode. You know, you can like um, do it like forty five degrees, one hundred and thirty degrees. You know, you yeah. can open the camera app. Um, you can like hold it like a camcorder. You know, if you're like going out and you're like vlogging, that's kind of what I did when I recorded my my trip to the Xiaomi store. Actually, yeah, it's like better if I can hold it like this to show you. Like, you know, oh, this is yeah. what it's like. You know, you're holding yeah. like a camcorder, right? I don't know that and I've ever see the seen someone hold that. The oh, I've seen that. I, didn't, like I, that I saw, I saw Michael smart. Fisher doing it on Michael Instagram. Michael Fisher did it. Like, yeah. I didn't yeah. even know it was a thing until I saw Richard yeah. Lye do it. Like, yeah. on, that's and, super on smart. And that's yeah, really cool. um, of course, this kind of this kind of phone is made for taking selfies, right? So if I open and go to the camera app, where's my camera app? Right there, right? So you have the main camera and you have a portrait, two X telephoto portrait camera. Um, and of course, since the whole screen is a viewfinder, you know, you can take selfies like this, right? Um, I can like pull my palm up and take a selfie. Studio oh, that's selfie. That's so cool. Holding the Studio selfie. Yeah. Portrait mode, you know, uh, or then even the, I think it automatically switches to the 2X when I go to portrait. Or if I go to 2X, there you go. Oh. That's so cool. No, yeah. But yeah, it's. Woo. I'm <laughs> that looks sharp my face. where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my immediate take with all this is that this phone addresses the two biggest challenges with a flippable phone we've seen so far, which is front screen functionality and battery life. Right. Exactly. That's th those have been the two biggest kind of, you know, kind of gotchas on flippables is that small battery because of the form factor and the, the size of the phone, etc. And then the fact that all, you know, everyone's been struggling with the front screen in terms of making it truly functional. Mm hmm. Well, I will say that yeah. not every app seems to be compatible with the front screen. I'm not able to add <laughs> everything. Right. Um, but I so more than the exact more than Samsung, but certainly well, more than Samsung. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'll give them credit for. You can run a lot more apps. And hopefully if they do bring it globally, like they they choose to enable a whole bunch of, you know, Google yeah. apps like they already enabled here, but a bunch of third party apps like, you know, I don't know, Reddit, Twitter, if you wanted to maybe not go overboard completely, but there's so much cool stuff they could do with this front display. And honestly, how, cool. if, if you, uh, how much um, like familiarity do you have with the Z flip series? And I guess where I'm headed is when I'm looking at this in your hand, it does like, it's not as thin. It's not as thin and narrow as what we were seeing in the pictures of the fold, right? Like this has a little bit of a thicker quality to it. I wonder how it compares to the Z flip as far as that's concerned. I know it's got a bigger uh, battery, so Z that flip might, fix. What's that? I do have a Z Flip 6, actually. Um, yeah. Not here right now in my hands, obviously. Yeah. But I have been comparing them. They're pretty similar profile-wise. Like I'd say the biggest difference is the battery capacity, the, the camera sensors, and the usage of the front display. Like when it's closed, you know, front to back, is that as thin? They're both, like, pretty, they're both pretty similar in terms pretty of similar? thickness okay. and, yeah. and weight and everything like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks like a sharp phone. I like it. Yeah. And the crease is barely visible. And like barely tactile, it's kind of like wide, so you can clearly run yeah. your finger through it without feeling much like of the crease going. That over challenge it. has improved over the years, and also I think our forgiveness has improved over the years. Yeah. You know, when it was a when it was a new thing, and we weren't used to seeing that on screens, it was yeah, a now really big deal. And now it's kind of like, it. no, you know what? That's part of foldables, and it's not the end of the world. It really isn't. When you've got contents shining into your eyes on the screen, you right. kind of don't see it. Really? Uh, so I know these are China only, Michelle, but what are the price points on the fold and the flip just to give a context? Like, is this, you know, price similar to the Samsung phones or cheaper or where, where, does, where does the pricing come in? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember what I wrote. I did write the prices in Chinese RMB at the bottom yeah. of both articles. I'm going to check that. And right I will now. note <laughs> that almost 100% of the time, you cannot directly translate those numbers into. Yeah. 
like Z US flip. dollars and have it make yeah. sense. Z Flip, yeah. uh, fifty nine ninety nine won for the twelve two fifty six model. Sixty four ninety nine won for the twelve five twelve, and then seventy two ninety nine for the top end, which is yeah, so, so sixteen looking, gigs of RAM, one terabyte of storage. Yeah. So looking at the yeah. Mixfold, the Mixfold two, Mixfold four starts at eight eight thousand nine hundred ninety nine won for the twelve uh, gig and two hundred fifty six gig model, which translates according to Google to uh, one thousand two hundred thirty seven dollars. So, I mean, that's, if in, you were to do a one to one translation, which you right. cannot do generally, right. Right. that's like about six hundred dollars cheaper than the Z yeah. Fold Six. Damn! Look but at I'll that stress photo. again: you that cannot do a one to one translation. They almost never release at the same price. Globally. Right? Yeah, yeah. There's 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 tariffs and all the stuff that has to be uh, applied. Yeah. And that, yeah, that, you can't. Just to be clear, you can convert one to USD like I just did in Google, but the price won't will carry over. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like the pricing yeah. would change once it comes over yeah, to the states yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it's not um, an apples to apples comparison. Yeah, yeah for sure. Cool so stuff. I just want to ask you Sweet. two a quick question. This is something I asked my Twitter yeah. followers. Um, what do you guys think of flip pulls? I know where like this kind of device is targeted more at women or people who just want a really compact phone. Um, but like, what do you guys think of flip pulls of compact? Phones I like am this? tempted because the Z Fold Six was the first one, not the first one, but like the most recent one, and now this one, seeing it in your hand when unfolded, looks like. I, like if you if you showed me that unfolded and said this is not a foldable phone, right. I would believe it, right? Like I wouldn't, I would think it's just a regular phone, right? Um, I, I've been tempted since the razor came out and since the fold came out because I love the idea of the clamshell design. I love the small form factor. I love all that kind of stuff, but all the all the limitations have kept me from it. The battery life, the front screen being novelty. Um, but this is the first one that's got, and the Z Fold 6 to a certain degree got me like, I'm, I am tempted by it. I don't know, Jason, what do you think of them? Yeah, I'm, su I'm super pro flip. Um, yeah. I think it's a really strong form factor. Um, I have yet to live with a flip. Like I've seen them, like I'm a flip tourist, not a flip. You know what I mean? I, I've lived with at least a fold for a, lo a long enough period of time to get a real sense of like, okay, I could see myself with that if these things are addressed. The flip looks from the outside to me to be a really great form factor. The fact that it actually goes out to the form factor that we're all very used to when it's unfolded, doesn't take up a whole lot of space, has the flexibility of you know being that c small, can, um, compact form factor that you can still do things like take selfies and stuff. I, I think it's got a lot going for it. And I, I honestly have always thought that that would be the form factor that would win between the two as far as like widespread acceptance. I don't know that that's proven to be the case, but that's always been my hunch. Yep. So Michelle, let me take it back to you. What do you think of the foldable? What, you know, you asked your Twitter followers, but personally, what do you, how do you feel about it? For me personally, I'm the kind of guy who likes to, like read a lot of documents or read a lot of yeah. comments or read like yeah. manga, comics, things like that. Yeah. So I personally so the prefer larger. the book style foldable, yeah. but this has a lot of appeal. It's yeah. like a smartwatch on your hand. You know, yeah. you don't always need to, you can like walk around with it, have Google maps open, yeah. like quickly pull it out, have like your, your, um, your wallet card showing, you know, I think it's really, mm -hmm. it has a lot of, it makes a lot of sense for a yeah. lot of people. I definitely think this is, of the two form factors for foldables, this is the one that has the most potential to go mainstream. Yeah, yep. that's kind of how I felt too. Yeah, but I, I agree with you though, Michelle. I do prefer the fold, like the like. Give me the option to go with a daily driver. I probably go with the book fold version for the same reason you had to, to read, to comics, to all that sort of stuff. So, Bigger, um, all right. Well, well, last <laughs> thoughts on the Xiaomi trip, Michelle. It sounds like you had a really cool experience. Was it? Was it fun? Even though it was like whirlwind, was it fun or? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while since I've been to China, so I loved the cultural whiplash of being there. Yeah, yeah I bet. Cool. Well, Never we're very mind. jealous. It's very, uh, uh, that sounds like a blast, and you got to ride in that car, so that's pretty cool. So, <laughs> um, so Michelle, what you missed while you were in China on the show last week, though, was the fact that all Pixel 9 stuff leaked. Um, we saw we saw Pixel 9 specs and Pixel 9 Fold specs getting leaked around the world through various uh, re regulation kind of fi you know filings and things like that. Um, we've seen this happen before, where the stuff gets leaked ahead of a Google event. Um, you know, we do have the Made by Google event coming in mid-August on August 13th, where we expected to see the Pixel 9, the Pixel 9 Fold. So now that all that stuff is in the wild, what does Google do? 
they just released it as well. They went they ahead. Do what they do. They went ahead and posted a couple of teaser videos showing off the Pixel 9 Pro, driving home the August 13th date, um, kind of showing off the the look of the Pixel 9 Pro in the context of the you know the, the first phone of the Gemini era, you know, kind of uh, positioning that we've seen it. Um, the video itself was very focused on Gemini. Um, and then, uh, um, uh, you know, yeah, then, then showing off the phone in a little purple hue and you saw the white, the white phone with the, with the, the camera bump or camera Island, as we've been seeing in the renders. Um, so the pixel nine pro is real. It existed. Um, it exists, it is coming. And then on top of that, so shiny, I know, so, the, top, the camera bump is just so shiny. I like the camera. I got into an, I argument, too. I, I got into an argument with Burke over it. Burke hates it. I oh, think it's I great. Like it. I think it looks Star Trek y. I'm on board. I'm, I'm um, on board. Totally. And so I was like, my first thought upon seeing this, like, okay, they got ahead of the leaks. That's what it is. But then, nope. They then released a video teasing the Pixel 9 Fold, um, Pixel 9 Pro Fold, which got got ahead of all that stuff as well. Um, again, in the context of Gemini being a Gemini phone, a Gemini fold- foldable, um, the same kind of teaser. You could tell that this was a bit of a scramble because they had this video in place and they just plugged in the different you know kind of phone styles. Um, but we saw the Pixel 9 Fold with the same camera set up. The phone opens up, says, oh, hi, AI. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the double height uh, camera camera bump on the fold, um, which I also, I like, I don't know, Michelle, what do you think of these, uh, now that they're real and not renders, what do you think of the design? Um, I mean, I think that leak from the NCC definitely made the phone look a lot better than it previously did. Like than we previously got from the renders, like people were thinking it's going to have like a more one plus open soft form factor. And those photos definitely showed that to be true. And I definitely think, it looks a lot better than people were initially expecting. Yep. Yeah. The, there's still something about the top, the, the two pill thing on top of each other inside of the thing that doesn't work for my eyes, but it's pro I'm, I've, I've been to this rodeo enough times that like, I'm going to armchair quarterback it from, from the internet. And then I'm going to get it in my hands and be like, Oh, I get it. Okay. Yeah. It's actually fine. So I'm sure it'll be fine, but there's something about that orientation. Like it looks normal to me when it's in the nine pro and it's a single robe when it's stacked like that, it just kind of looks like, I don't know. What do we do with the pills? I guess we just put them on top of each other. Okay. Let's move on. I mean, I don't know what just, else you we, do, but <laughs> we, we just, just looked weird. at the, we just looked at the Xiaomi uh, mix fold, which has the cameras stacked in a similar fashion to a certain degree, right? I mean, Michelle, yeah. you saw it in person. No, right. I mean, I mean, it's mm. not that the configuration is wrong. It's not like yeah. having the cameras in a, in like a square. No, but yeah, there's just yeah. something about the like the the, the two pill. I don't know. It's it's yeah. a silly thing. I fully admit it's silly. But when my eyes see this. It, it looks messy to me and I'm, yeah. I'm expected to be proven wrong when I see it in person. I can't wait to get our hands on it. I'm excited. Um, yeah, I'm excited too. And then one other note that came, that came out while all this stuff was happening was apparently um, uh, if you pre-order the pixel nine pro in a bunch of different countries uh, uh, right now, not including the U S we'll see um, Google is promising to throw in a limited edition collectible. Um, this oh. is a, this is visible on the Australia, Japan, and Singapore Google stores saying that it's a special gift for our first orders. And it's described as a piece of Google pixel design history, oh. um, exclusively for the first orders of the new pixel nine pro phones. Um, and which shows that the regular pixel nine buyers, uh, won't be getting this giveaway. Uh, the Taiwan site, uh, reveals that the items tr- in translation are quote unquote, original Google pixel design posters, um, which is kind of weird, but a design poster, like, I don't know. I'll be curious to see what those kind of are. Um, are you going to hang it on your wall if it's a poster? Uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> if you're really into it. Um, this seems to be an Asia Pacific thing. Um, and you know, in, in the past yeah. they've offered up like cases or things like that. Um, it would be cool if they made this worldwide or figured out some way to make it us based, but, um, it's a little bit of a little bit of extra to get people to entice people to go to the pro. So it's a little extra. Yeah. We'll hmm. see. Okay. Maybe it's a pair of Google glass. Yeah. It's like a, they have a bunch of old stock on hand and they're like, well, how do we get rid of it? Well, it's just maybe it a piece of history. No, yeah. it's probably not. Yeah. Right. Anywho. So then Michelle, you hit the ground back in the States and then what happened? Google released Android 15 beta <laughs> four, <laughs> which fortunately is not like a big update in terms of new functionality. Um, 
what they announced in their blog post is that it's the second platform stability release. And which that means that like all anything that developers have to worry about is finalized. And so you should get to updating your app to support Android 15 without worry that Google will change anything in the future. Yeah. Um, they did announce that PNG based emoji fonts are no longer supported. But, um, you know, Google already switched over from a PNG based file to a vector based one Android 13. Um, so that that process has already been rolling for a couple of releases now. But they did share some mitigation steps in case you are relying on those old PNG based emoji font files. So in terms of anything that's actually new in the update, there are just two smaller things that people have noticed. Um, the first one is something that actually I discovered is a hint within the settings app that there's going to be a new charge limit functionality for Google Pixel devices. So for those of you who don't know, Google has already offered an adaptive charging feature for a while now that basically automatically limits the battery from being charged beyond 80%. Um, once you've plugged in your phone for too long or like a couple of hours before you're, before you're scheduled to unplug it based on what the system detects. Now they're working on a manual charge limit feature that'll let you automatically, sorry, let you manually set the battery to be uh, stop charging at 80%. So when you, know, when you plug in your phone, it'll charge 80% and that's it. It won't charge all the way up to 100%. And the reason you might want to do that is for prolonging the battery in Jeopardy. So um, it's, it's been widely understood that charging your battery to about 80% instead of 100% um, consistently will allow you to prolong how long that battery will hold its charge. And the reason for that is just, you know, chemistry and the way batteries work. And, you know, lithium, charging, discharging cycles, ion. stress mm, on, yeah. you know, yeah. it's charge chemistry stuff, right? I'm not a chemist, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I can't really explain it. <laughs> But you know why it's important right yeah. now. You know why it's especially. important. You want you're going to keep your phones for seven years, which Google is promising That's exactly to it. support for. Yep. Yep. You want to make sure your battery actually lasts that long without exactly. having to replace it. And think about this is knowledge that we did not have ten years ago, right? When we were like, "Why is my battery dead?" After you know, you know, we, <laughs> yeah. what they've learned, what a combination of what we learned about battery technology and science, and then also how what Google has developed in, in terms of how to manage that effectively, which is interesting. So, yeah. And Anything the else? other thing that people have discovered is that if you activate the Easter egg in Android 15 Beta 4 now, um, you're actually able to, once you land on a planet, going through the, the spaceship game Easter egg, you can plant a flag on planets now. And that's something I actually discovered um, <laughs> a couple of months ago or a couple of weeks ago. And that was one of the Patreon poll picks, but it lost the Patreon poll pick. Yeah. <laughs> so unfortunately, we didn't get to talk about it on the show. Um, but the <laughs> other thing that's new in Beta 4 is that once you activate the Spaceship Easter game, you actually get this new screensaver that basically is cool. the game, but it's on autopilot. And it's a screensaver that just basically hmm. plays the game, and you see the ship flying through space and trying to automatically land on planets, which is kind of cool. That's nerdy and this. neat. I love it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. The Landroid screensaver is what it's called. There's a little reward for finding it. I like that. That's fun. So, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Cool. Neat. Very cool. All right, so we are, we're Sweet. close to launch. So do we think... Right now, let's revisit our bets. Do we think that they're going to launch Android 14 at the Made by Google event in mid-August? Oh, um, any like new features to Android? No, no, like like Android. I'm sorry, Android 15. Release like it. Android 15 is final release out the door. Oh, oh. Yeah. I think early September. You still think early September? Like so after September. the event. Okay. So then, would that imply that the device might come out before the update? I I would guess that the device would come out with the update. <laughs> Date, the question is what, what, what the availability of the devices will be, like whether or not the yeah, that's device, what, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, is yeah, is yeah. are they going to time the new Android? Well, actually, that's a good question because before the device thing happened later, yeah, right, and now it's moved back. Now it's kind of colliding with the normal release time of Android. So does it release? Is it the first kind of like release of the new version of Android? Yeah, I don't know, man. I That's think I think I think they aligned. I think I think, I think they align. I, I think when they roll out these devices in mid-August, it's going to be shipping with Android 15. Android well, remember 15 they're going to announce yeah. it mid-August, but they're not going to release them. That's like, the question. Never we don't know them the but, day of. Yeah, we don't right. know what the device availability will be. You know, and so. but that but that actually makes it in my mind more likely that it's probably going to launch with the yeah. new version of Android. You know what I mean? Um, I well, yeah, so. of course they, they'll launch with Android 15, but yeah. whether or not Android 15 will roll out to right. existing devices, I think that'll happen probably once the devices start shipping. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's a fair point. Yes, absolutely. Um, in other device releasey news, there is a little company called Nothing. You may have heard of them because we talk about them a lot. Um, a new phone, although it's a new phone, kind of like an old phone, but a little newer, <laughs> called the Phone 2A Plus, which, honestly, we know very little about, next to nothing about. All it says is plus, more, extra. An extraordinary new smartphone is coming on July 31st, 5 o'clock Eastern. Um, okay, EST, so that would be 5 a.m. Eastern, I guess. Um, and yeah, so this is interesting. So you've got the phone two a, then you've got the two or sorry, you've got the phone two. And then a little bit later they released the two a, which is like, okay, we stripped things down and now we're putting it back, but not quite going to where two a or the two went. See, it's kind of confusing. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I don't know what's going to (laughs) happen. Like the phone two a was their mid range. Yeah. Well, yeah, the is this going to be like premium. a flagship version of it? Surely the, that would just be the nothing phone 3. Yeah, that would be the 3. Like, I don't think this is going to be a flagship. No, I don't think it's going to be a flagship either. It's Is it going to have a different chip? Is it going to have just upgraded right. screen right. maybe? Upgraded camera? Is cameras? it going to have like, AI? How is much it gonna have... are they going to change? Yes, yeah. right. Um, well, what, what was the system on a chip in the 2A? Uh, Wasn't it a... It, Dimensity, Dimensity 7200 7, Pro. 7200 Pro. Okay. 7200 Pro. Um Maybe an update to that. More glyphs. No, I don't know. <laughs> if we're lucky. <laughs> yeah, they're like, there is no change on this phone from the 2A, except we've added two more LEDs on the back. <laughs> I have no idea. And, and here's our full announcement event. Um, yeah, I have no idea. I'm, I'm super curious because it really does seem like, okay, so then you're going back to the 2. Or yeah. would it be the 3? Yeah, I don't know. It's confusing. Yeah. A little strange. We'll find out. We'll find out on July 31st. We'll find out together. All right. We got some apps. Yeah. We're going to do some apps before, and then we're going to get to the interview. That's coming up. Yeah, so a couple of couple of app news, uh, just some notable releases. A couple of things came out. I know a lot of people are asking for more app stuff. Um, Notion, uh, the fo- folks behind uh, the the productivity app Notion, which a lot of people swear by, you know, in terms of you know write you know kind of writing notes and organizing them and and all that sort of stuff. Um, they've developed a calendar app. Um, I've actually been using Notion Calendar on the on my Mac desktop for a couple of months now, and I it's been able to take all of my various Google calendars, merge them into one in a nice clean layout. I've actually switched to using that versus using GCal, um, and so I've been waiting for them to release an Android app, and sure enough, they have. Um, so now Notion Calendar is available for download in the Google Play Store. Um, again, if you use Google Calendar or Outlook or any other calendars, it kind of is one of those, we're going to you know bring all your calendars into one spot kind of solution. Um, and again, I've been happy with it on the, on the desktop. Um, so I'm assuming I'm going to be happy with it on, on Android. Uh, I've downloaded and installed it. I'm going to start using it this week. Um, and we'll report back. But if you're a Notion user, you know how, what their kind of approach to software is, uh, you know, the clean kind of design and all that fun mm-hmm. stuff. Um, I enjoy Notion Calendar a ton. So uh, I'm excited that it's available mm. on Android now. So, yep. Very nice. Looks slick. Yep. So definitely, definitely recommend that. If you're, if you're looking, if you're looking to replace GCal, um, which if you ask yeah. me, all these years later, a lot of these Google apps are getting very bloated and heavy and like messy, not messy, but just kind do you of find Google calendar. I do. Bloated I do. and messy. I do. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So especially when I've got nine Google accounts that I'm on my phone, three or four of which I'm managing calendars. It's kind of yeah. my own problem, I guess. But yeah. So yeah. You did it to yourself. It's true. true. That's why it really hurts, Ron. Yep. <laughs> uh, sorry. I had to get a little radio head in there for those of yeah. you who are too young to know who that is. Uh, there's a few of you out there, I'm sure. Yep. Anthropic has a new Android app. Uh, it's Claude, finally coming to Android. Actually brought um, that LLM's app to iOS a couple of months ago. And now been shown on 9to5Google, writing that it is now on Android. For those of you who like to use Claude directly, I've talked about Perplexity many times, I think, on this show at this point. And Perplexity uses Claude as, along with a lot of other LLMs. And so I end up using Claude a lot, just not through their app. I use it through Perplexity. So 
This is one way to just get direct access to Claude itself. I find Claude to be a fantastic a like text-based LLM. Like if you're like writing, you know, you need some writing assistance or some summary assistance, that sort of stuff. Claude is like one of my preferences. So I've, I've heard similar things that Claude is yeah. very, very good from what I've yeah. heard. So really good. Cool. So yeah, there you go. Uh, with the, like it becoming an Android app is, is it like at all comparable to the way Gemini is integrated as like an assistant on your device? Oh, that's, that's and a of good course, question. Gemini has a lot of I'm, issues in terms of what it can do. But like Claude, you yeah. got to manually open and then manually enter, right? You can't just well, say same thing with like know, the per- the, yeah. the perplexity app. Like same thing I, with the Chat GPT app. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think it's on the same level. Of that I think I think what what you're talking about, Michelle, is Gemini integrated at the OS level and as part of like a truly using the assistant APIs and everything. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah a lot I of these apps it. have yeah. a ways to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I highly doubt that this well, has any of that tendril stuff. And that depends. On. That depends on what you're using it for, right? Like if you're using it for an assistant, a, a artificial intelligence on your phone to help control your phone, stuff like that, or using it for access to an LLM for a search engine result or a task or something like that. It's all what the what the context is, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Interesting. Um, and last on the app side of things, just a little zeitgeist world. The Olympics start this week. Uh, the the <gasps> international do? gathering of athletes are happening in Paris. Um, so you might be wondering how you can watch the Olympics via your Android devices. Well, there's a couple of different ways. There's actually of course an, there's an app for that. Of course. There's an official uh, Paris Olympics 2024 app that you can download that has the schedules, and it's a, they are streaming video of different events and things like that. Um, so you might want to check out the official app. That's one way to go. Um, for those of our audience who are in the United States, um, Peacock really seems to be the, the go-to spot. NBC, uh, uh, NBC Universal has the exclusive rights to the Olympics uh, here in the States. And this is something where um, a couple of years ago, the last Olympics, you know, P- Peacock existed. They didn't really take advantage of, of what they had with their own product. And it seems as if they've learned that and they're ready to have Peacock kind of step up and be like the go-to app to get everything for the Olympics. Um, so basically everything that's going out and, you know, they've got multi-view, they've got, you know, uh, uh, recaps, they've got a lot of, you know, more than just hey. streaming the video in terms of what the product offering is. Um, I am a Peacock subscriber, so I'm kind of excited about it. Um, you might want to look to your carrier to see if there's a way to get kind of a free um, uh, a free deal for the time eight, period. If not, you can get it for seven ninety nine a month. Eight um, bucks to get yeah. the Olympics for the month because I don't. Yeah, we don't. We don't have. Well, we. Well, wait a minute. Actually, <laughs> we might actually have Peacock, and, we, and I just don't use it. <laughs> I, I honestly can't remember because you know sometimes they bundle things. And they I know did a, at one they point did a we deal had... for they did a deal for Google users when they launched. That's how I got it, you know. But that I, that might be long expired. Maybe I think. But, yeah. maybe with I can't remember. I feel like at one point we got it bundled with something, and I think maybe Probably. the bundle is up. But eight bucks, like yeah. I was I was thinking I was going to sign up for like YouTube TV for the month, and that's like eighty. Well, that's that's the other alternative that if you don't want to sign up for Peacock, even though I do recommend it because it's eight bucks for the month and then you Holy can just cow, you, 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 yeah, 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 that's the um, way to go. And eight bucks a month might be with ads or um, I'm not sure if that if that eliminates ads. So it might be a little it's more not, to get rid of ads. Yeah, it's not saying anything about yeah. ads in the little blurby blurb. Yeah, so, but we'll so. see. Um, yeah. But if you don't want Peacock for whatever reason, um, then your alternative is either YouTube TV or Hulu with live TV or Sling or any of the uh, yeah. streaming services that aggregate cable. And then you're just basically watching NBC channels on those apps. Um, so I think Peacock is going to give you more bang for your buck if you're a Looks phone like or it. tablet user because they've got additional functionality in there. Um, yeah. It could be interesting. Yeah. Well, and yeah, and I'm sure they're going to like that multi view. That's going to be yeah. pretty sick. Actually. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. cool. Right on. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for apps. Um, so yeah, that's it for the show. Except well, the, the, the first part of the show. The first part. We teased the very beginning. Don't yes. don't don't touch that dial. Speaking of Olympics, don't touch that dial. Um, because after a short break, we are going to talk with Sam Bright, the general manager of Google Play, about some big announcements that Google has, and uh, we're gonna through the through the passage of time and. <laughs> Suddenly we are going to appear, or I'm going to appear, and Michelle's going to appear in New York uh, on the East Coast talking with Sam Bright uh, about Google Play.
So we'll throw to ourselves in New York. All right. Well, everybody, through the magic of time and some air travel, we are now in New York at the new Google campus, I guess a couple of months ago, actually just opened. It's a beautiful uh, campus here, sitting with Sam Bright, VP and GM of Google Play. How you doing, Sam? Doing great. Thank you for having me. And I hear congrats are in order for oh. one year anniversary. Yeah, we just oh, yeah. Android faithful. Thank, Thank you. Uh, so that's super exciting. And <laughs> I think we're all united at trying to find and, and have you even more people be Android faithful. So absolutely, uh, totally yeah. agree. man, I love the name. It's it's, it's so perfect name. because yeah. Android just as a platform, um, as we've seen over the years with all about Android and then Android faithful, like people really do find that like that allegiance, that like yeah. that connection that with resonates. their heart. It yeah. really resonates, and 100%. yeah, it's nice to to be able to participate in that energy field. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Um, so we have seen a lot of what you have presented mm -hmm. um, this afternoon around kind of changes to Google Play and actually not, you know, really kind of bolstering what it what it mm -hmm. exists to be, mm -hmm. you know? I think what's top of mind for me right now, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this, is that it's easy to think of us being in a post-app world because mm -hmm. apps for such a long time had all of this magnetic energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, th other things have kind of put that to the side a little bit. We have the apps we use mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's just the way it is. You know, discovery uh -huh. isn't as much a thing. You know, it's mm -hmm. almost like I have to remember to go to discover mm -hmm. apps versus mm -hmm. just having a need and jumping into it. And it really seems like a lot of what you've announced today kind of satisfies some of those goals of like reinvigorating, mm -hmm. reconnecting people to it. So maybe we can just start with a little bit of a, a quick kind of brief walk through some of the major key points that you announced, and then we can dive into some details. Yeah, sure, uh, and completely agree. We spent a lot of time talking to our users and developers, and if you know users are anything like, I mean, even me, like I have so many apps on my device, uh, and it's really easy for me to not only engage with some of the apps, but even in some cases, forget about the ones that mm -hmm. I have. Uh, and so we've been really listening to feedback from our users and developers and seeking to evolve play from not just a destination that folks come to, but also a pl a enable a play to go to users as well. Mm. And so there are several ways that we are exploring that. We're doing that through more curated spaces centered around interests. We announced uh, comics today in Japan, which enables users to uh, uh, engage with content from top uh, mm -hmm. comics and manga and webtoon publishers in Japan. Uh, and not only content, like first chapter samples, anime trailers, editor picks, et cetera, around apps that we already have, but also to see related apps that might be interesting to them. So that's an example with InPlay. We mm -hmm. also uh, uh, announced today that Tomorrow we're going to be launching collections, which is basically uh, if you long press on the Play app icon, you can get uh, a widget, this collections widget, and it auto organizes all of your apps. So it's a lot easier and cleaner to engage. It then has some very common tabs, whether it's like shop or read or listen, where we are able to help you engage directly with common app actions. So if you're like me, we have tons of different shows from various streaming apps. You're trying to remember, you know, which which app was that from? Now I can just look at collections, and it's very easy for me to see different carousels highlighting those those shows or books or other things. And so it's part of responding to this feedback from users on they appreciate the wealth of options that are out there, but it's also in some cases tricky for them to navigate, and they want more control around it. It responds to the feedback from developers too, because developers Developers want to find the way to get their apps in front of users and highly engaged users. You can imagine a comics app developer knowing that they can reach users who have already expressed interest in comic apps within and comics within Japan gets really excited. Uh, a developer, you know, we, we just launched with you know 35 developers in, in collections, like a developer who may have had a cart abandoned or something along those lines. Now it's really easy for the user to pick up where they left off. Well, I'm sure that you know you got a lot of feedback, as you mentioned, from both developers and users. But how did you identify specifically where in the Google Play Store you wanted to make changes to address that feedback? 
Yeah, no, it's a great question. Thank you for asking it. We always have our ears to the ground uh, to hear what users and developers are telling us are top of mind. Um, and we saw sort of interest for both providing greater personalization and curation within the Play Store, but then also enabling people to engage with it in other surfaces on their Android devices. And so that's what's led to us launching several things today to speak to that feedback, right? So, you know, it's part of us, we haven't talked about this yet, but along those same lines, when you're thinking about games, a lot of times users may have like a key game that they love, but they also are trying to find other games that are like it, right? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're like, okay, let's launch a multi-interest selector or filter so that users can say, well, you know, I like racing games, but I also like action games. Can you give me more, maybe I'm not as into puzzle games, but now I'll see more relevant recommendations for me that'll help me discover other games that are, that are really exciting. And so we're, we're exploring different surfaces, different experiences within play to respond to that, that feedback. And then also going a little bit outside of play to give users control on how it can surface elsewhere on their device. Hmm. Are those, uh, just real quick, those characteristics, mm -hmm. are those given to play specifically by the developer to say this mm -hmm. is these things? Yeah, um, so we actually, a uh, great example, uh, this applies both to the multi-interest filters as well as even some of our category guides. We get those uh, uh, descriptors or what we call facets uh, from our developers. And in many cases, like if you pick a category guide or even uh, to go just to click deeper, they'll, you know, let's say it's action games. They'll give us, you know, details around maps or controls or weapons or things along those lines that then enable a user to take that developer supplied information and make richer choices about mm -hmm. whether or not that app will resonate with them or not. Right. One of the other announcements that you talked about is in regards to the Google Play Points program. Mm -hmm. And in the demo, I saw um, a screen where you could redeem Play mm -hmm, Points mm -hmm. for a subscription to Walmart Plus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious, how did you pitch companies like Walmart to you know, convince them to be able to redeem play points for you know an actual subscription service yeah. like Walmart Plus. Well, the, How do you yeah. approach that pitch? Yeah. Yeah. Value proposition for Walmart. Mm -hmm. Well, as I, it's a great question. As I mentioned in the keynote, you know, Google Play Points is already one of the largest rewards programs in the world, uh, and not a lot of people know this. We have 220 million members who are in Google Play Points, and they're very active. Uh, and so it was somewhat of an easy conversation with uh, other partners to say, hey, we've got this really engaged loyalty program. In many cases, they're already engaging with your app. Uh, they're mm -hmm. already, uh, you know, they're, they're used to loyalty mechanics. They're, they, in many cases, they've amassed a variety of points that they want to find ways to deploy. And we've uh, piloted and experimented with different partners uh, along the way and have gotten really great feedback. So that caused us to want to expand it. The, you know, six months of Walmart Plus membership, uh, we pre-announced it today. It's coming later this fall. Uh, but you can expect us to find ways for folks to get even more value out of the points that they're generating just doing the things they love uh, on play and in apps from our developers. And those, those offers are... Um, detached from what a user has installed on their device, right? So, That's correct. Yeah, That's correct. So it's a broader kind of attention uh, opportunity to kind of expand the attention of that particular app and service, not just I have the Walmart Plus app and oh hey they're offering me this this nice deal. Exactly, yeah. and it also from the the Walmart perspective, maybe I don't have the Walmart Plus app and it's or, or the Walmart app, and this causes me to download the app yeah. because it's now an actually experiment with Walmart yeah. Plus and it reduces the experience. The of interacting with it, and that opens the door. And then they yeah. maybe purchase more uh, items, and it shows up in their shopping carts on collections. Sure. There we go. Okay, so thank you for mentioning collections. Because <laughs> I think collections, honestly, for me, of everything, it's a lot of really cool, interesting opportunities to get people back through the door, speaking of doors, through the door for, for Google Play and, and you know uh, interacting with it. Collections seems like a really big opportunity, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. just for the apps and the services to you know, kind of highlight the different uh, parts of their apps that mm -hmm, they want people mm -hmm. to see, but also for users, because like you were saying, as a user, I have, I mean, I have 
in the hundreds of yes. apps installed on my phone. You're just scrolling and, and that's scrolling. A small, thing. tiny little sliver of what's actually out there, let's mm-hmm. say. But uh, but that is a large amount for me as a user to have to go through. Um, and I'm just kind of curious how how does this work behind the scenes? Like mm-hmm. when we're talking about you know all those apps. Offering information and data into collections. Mm-hmm. Talk, you know, talk a little bit about the API that's driving that. Yeah, so we have a, a new SDK, Engage SDK, and that is uh, what we've leveraged in partnering with developers because we believe developers know their users really well. They provide us insights into specific app actions that they want to surface within the collections experience. Mm-hmm. And so that's, you know, we've kind of like uh, grouped that into specific tabs. That's why there's things like shop where you may have carts. There's things like watch where you may have picking up where you left off in shows. There's things like listen where you'll see different carousels that feature, you know, mixes that may have been prompted for, you know, YouTube Music or Spotify or others. And you have things like Read, where you can pick up where you left off. But that gives the developer choice as to, like, what are the, you know, what are the most likely engaging moments within their app that a user is going to want to jump back in. Uh, or remember. This. Or remember, P- you know, yes. P- pick up from where they left <laughs> off. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so I find personally that I'm jumping into these apps more frequently that are within my collections because I'm automatically being surfaced something that is very relevant. I don't have to remember like where in the app that really relevant piece of content was for me. And so, you know, we're, we're starting with a set of developers, but there's a long list of folks who will be coming over time. Mm-hmm. So one of the challenges with any new technology or service for developers to engage with is, you know, you want to have enough content for users to actually find it interesting enough to add this collections widget to their home screen. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, the, the way that you add this widget to the home screen is you got to tap the Play Store mm-hmm. icon, mm-hmm. tap the widgets button, scroll down, and yep. then like pick the widget. How do you drive adoption of the collections widget so that you know enough users find it useful mm-hmm. to add it to their home screen and enough developers find there's enough demand mm-hmm. for them to add support for this collections widget? Yeah, it's a great question. It's something we've given a lot of thought to. Um, you know, first of all, we're, we're very thrilled with uh, 35 top developers, you know, folks like Reddit and Spotify and YouTube Music and Walmart and the list goes on, who have already chosen to partner with us. Even as we've been testing, they've been seeing some great results. Uh, you know, widgets is kind of where we're starting. Uh, it's a great great way for folks to have uh, good control over you know the experience they can resize it they can move it around into the relevant place within their uh, you know mobile experience but we are thinking about other surfaces uh, and more to come on that uh, over time yeah well and speaking a little bit to that is your um, you mentioned custom mm-hmm. collections mm-hmm. and I guess I'm just kind of curious because when I, I'll be honest, when when I started hearing you talk about mm-hmm. uh, collections, when I interacted with them, I was immediately reminded of the fact that like a couple of weeks ago, I just got back from a big vacation to Italy with my uh-huh. family, and leading up to the vacation, I created a folder on my desktop, mm-hmm. named it Italy, mm-hmm. and you know my tr- uh, Trenitalia, and an app <laughs> I'm only ever going to use when I'm in Italy, while yes. I take the trains. You know, certain apps ended up going into this folder, and when I saw custom collections, I was like. Oh man, that's like that folder that I created, yep. but on steroids. Can you yep. talk a little bit about what people can look forward to mm-hmm. there? I realize it's it's not happening yet, so maybe there's only so much you can share. But what can you share about that? Yeah, I can share about I can share a couple things, and there's another feature that's relevant to your experience on your Italy vacation that I want to talk touch on as well. So first of all, there's a set of these like you know pre-designed tabs that we mentioned. Later this year, we're going to bring other pre-designed tabs to mm-hmm. bear. And I think there was a few of those that were highlighted at the at, in the demo. There's others that we're thinking about. Custom collections enable you to, you know, sort of be in the driver's seat and decide that, like, there's either a particular uh, topic that is unique to you and you're going to access all the time or that there's a topic that's a little bit more ephemeral, uh, and so you just access it for a period of time. By the way, that's some of the same logic behind the personalization and play toggle that we mentioned. Because mm-hmm. before, it was, you know, you could obviously decide to opt in or opt out, but, you know, with your Italy example, you may not want to get reminded about, you know, <laughs> travel to Italy after, so after you're back home. You're yeah. like, I'm still trying to hold on to the vacation glow. You're 
Luckily, I'm not there anymore. You know, so look, I want to take you train. Okay, yeah, I want but to. I can't. Yeah, I don't want to look at a wine tasting app anymore. Uh, yeah. Like, so a, as a result, rather than like sort of depersonalizing the entire play experience, you can just you know, we got you, you flip that toggle off. Yeah. And then maybe the next time you go to Italy, which is hopefully soon, uh, yeah, you're able so. to relaunch it uh, yeah. along, the, along the way. Right on. Excellent. During, the, uh, during your announcement, I was kind of surprised that there wasn't more mention of generative AI considering how mm-hmm. big it's been this year. But mm-hmm. you did highlight how you're using generative AI to create summaries mm-hmm. of, you know, of applications as well as responses to frequently asked questions. Mm-hmm. And you also mentioned that starting soon, you'll also be able to compare applications. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can you talk a bit about how those comparisons will be generated? Like, mm-hmm, is it mm-hmm. pulling just information from the Play Store listing, mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. the developer's website if it's mm-hmm, provided? Mm-hmm. Like, how exactly is it creating that? Yeah, for sure. So uh, take a step back. We've seen the power of Gemini as a way to help you know, not only lean into this kind of once in a generation uh, shift that we're seeing in technology, but also we're seeing expectations from users and developers on how it can make platforms they already know and love become more useful and helpful for them. And so that's where we started, right? Like that's why we, you know, worked on this comment summarization feature, which is like helping users be able to easily sift through uh, and see key themes across the hundreds or thousands of reviews that are out there. And same thing, you know, with uh, FAQs. Uh, When it comes to category guides, again, this is developer supplied content. It's uh, content about their apps. uh, And it's, it's, you know, uh, uh, sort of like key topics or facets that I was alluding to earlier that are relevant for, you know, specific subcategories. We generated those categories based off of where we saw top query volume within, you know, English language uh, search queries in particular. That's where we're starting. Uh, and right now it's all you know app generated content. Is there an opportunity down the road to look at you know helpful, high quality web content? Maybe. We're not at a point where we can you know announce that right now, but at least for now, it's a lot simpler to just look at you know some of the app details that developers have already shared. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the demos that you had was for the Google Play games on PC experience. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that, you know, you were showing off all this demo. It was connected to, a, I think, a Razer laptop. Mm-hmm. Me, personally, I recently bought a Snapdragon X Elite Power uh-huh. ARM PC. And I'm sure there are people, you know, who have such PCs they just recently purchased and are wondering, does Google have any plans to bring play games on PC to, you know, ARM Windows laptops? Yeah, so we've been really excited by our Google Play games on PC journey. You know, as you know, we've been bringing games to Android devices for many, many years. And we've been excited and gratified by the response from developers who have scaled the number of titles we had from a few hundred last year to over 3,500 this year. Uh, As we've been scaling this experience, we've been hearing feedback along the journey, which is what caused us to launch the ability to be able to play multiple games at the same time. Uh, You know, do I have anything to announce right now about uh, Windows on ARM? (laughs) No, Uh, but we're always listening to um, we're always listening to feedback from from users along the way. Speaking of feedback and speaking of uh, Google Play um, games on PC, the multiple games at once feature, I'm mm-hmm. sure it has a better title than that, but that's <laughs> what I remember it as. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, right? that's that, might really, be, that might be taken. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think I've heard that one before. you heard before. that one before? <laughs> okay. Uh, but, I'll defer um, to the marketing team instead. Like, <laughs> yeah, de- definitely don't use that yeah. one. I can, I can give you that free advice right now. Um, I, like, I, I play games. I play yeah. games very casually. Definitely not to the the scale that I'm thinking I need to pull up multiples on a screen at once. But I Uh have to imagine that struck me as the kind of feature that is probably, I'm guessing, Mm -hmm. highly informed to you by the people who are really playing Mm -hmm. these games. Talk about kind of that experience and kind of that feedback loop of how Mm -hmm. some of what you're doing here, and in particular with that that feature, I have to imagine that came from from feedback, right? For sure. You know, uh, we are 
constantly constructing and reconstructing our product roadmap and the policies and programs and other things that we build based off of like the user research and all the different uh, feedback um, mechanisms we have, not only from users, but from developers, roundtables, advisory boards, uh, and other, you know, uh, ingestion mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we heard from, you know, really hardcore gamers is that they wanted this feature. They wanted the ability to be able to play multiple games at once because the game mechanics are such that in some cases you're taking some time for, you know, uh, whether it's, you know, your your castle to uh, mm. to have certain resources get uh, get generated, and then other things. Grinding in games and is a thing. It is a and thing. You just, sometimes thing. you just have to let it grind. Yeah, and and you may want you, you may want to you know multitask. Yeah. and do other things, and so you know talking to our you know uh, high touch gamers is what in, informed this this feature, and I'm sure it'll inform others in the future. Yeah, yeah, indeed. It's very cool. Do you have any last last thoughts before we wrap things up? Yeah, actually, we recently heard that you started up a new position within mm -hmm. Google, leading, you know, three different teams, the Android Developer Experience team, the Play team, and the Ecosystem Trust team. I kind of wanted to ask you, like, what kind of problems will your new mm -hmm. team be able to solve by consolidating these three, I'm assuming they're probably very big originally, mm -hmm, into mm -hmm. one cohesive unit? Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, I haven't shared this with, with uh, many people publicly yet, so you know we're breaking news on Android Faithful, which is has a ring to it, that. doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Um, uh, but I'm really excited about what this unlocks, right? So we formed this this new team, this Play Plus Developer Ecosystem team, and really what it's uh, seeking to solve is we want to support developers across their entire app lifecycle, whether it is you know building and testing apps, or it's releasing and updating them, or it's acquiring users, it's engaging users, it's re-engaging users, it's retaining users, it's helping them monetize, all sort of like supported by keeping the platform safe so that you know users and developers can connect and feel like they're uh, having a really positive experience. When you think about that, uh, what, what this team brings together is a series of different assets uh, to bring to support that, whether it's Android Studio or tools or toolkits, as well as obviously the distribution reach that that you know Play provides, and also the ability to look at trust holistically. The problems we're trying to solve for developers is we want them to uh, be excited and to affirmatively choose to invest in Android. And part of that is being able to build apps uh, for a multitude of form factors, whether that is handsets or it's tablets or it's watches or it's TV or auto, the list goes on, in as cheap and a high quality a way as possible. And in the process, we want them to feel like they get great return on their investment as they're as they're doing so. And so we brought together, you know, this team to really focus on uh, on those capabilities. Yeah, I'm I'm influenced by the fact that before I came to Google, I led product at a developer, and so I was always thinking about like where are we going to invest the marginal Scrum team hmm. to try to drive growth for for the platform. Here we're seeking to make the provide the tools and toolkits that are going to help the members of the Scrum team be as effective as possible and want to build for Android and also help the C-suite, which sometimes uh, we, we've heard from listening to past podcasts, you know, individual developers are trying to convince to invest in Android at the same time to pick Android in, in, in the process. So more to come on that, excited for what's ahead. Yeah, I think the changes that you've announced today really kind of highlight that dedication to making it more appealing mm -hmm. for developers, mm -hmm. for you know, companies running apps to re-engage or mm -hmm. to engage on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm really uh, happy that we got a chance to get a kind of a sweet sneak peek today and definitely happy that we got a chance to talk to you about it. Thank you so much for, yeah, for joining you, us on Android Faithful. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. I mean, the pressure was high for the one-year anniversary. You yeah, know, we, had had to to really <laughs> we had to deliver. We had to deliver. to deliver. Yeah, yeah, if I had known that. No, just kidding. Thank you for having me. This thank is awesome. Thank you, Sam Bright, VP and GM of Google Play. Let's talk again sometime. Let's yeah, do this again. Looking forward to it. Right on. And poof, Sam has walked out the door 
or he has disappeared it's, and been replaced in, in by Ron place, Richards. We have Ron. It's a big, it's a big seat to fill. No, Sam was great. That was a, I, I, so. I, for those watching or listening at home, I was behind the camera and the microphones uh, running things. But you I think you guys Burke. had a great. You I, I was Burke. I was doing the part of Burke this week. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think you guys had a great conversation with Sam. It's some oh, really exactly. interesting stuff coming out of uh, play. You yeah. Know? yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm legitimately yeah. like excited about um, collections yeah. specifically. Yeah. I, I see that as being something that, especially as it expands out and gets a little bit more complex having that customs collect custom collections yep. possibility I see that as being a really cool like yeah. tool to use depending on your circumstance or your, yeah I saw so many scenario. people looking at the the new comics collection that's only in Japan everyone is like why is this only in Japan? Yeah. Well, yeah, right. I, I understand why. So we spoke to the, the the product manager working on that, and she clarified. I forget her name, but she clarified that you know they this is something that they're testing, yeah. and they know that Japanese and manga are so engaged and that user base. Although I personally think the American market is pretty engaged in comic yeah, books. Yeah, yeah. my experience. I know. Yeah, I know. You're, you're, I, mean, I know. For anyone who doesn't yeah, know, yeah, Ron yeah, is deeply yeah, entrenched yeah, in the, in the, the comic, comic book world. world. Um, I think it would be great and a welcome uh, product differentiator, differentiator, especially in the world of digital comics in the U.S. because it's just so fractured right now. It'd be nice to have Google Play kind of step up, but we'll see. Maybe the test will do well in Japan and it comes over here. I One thing, so. going back to collections, nice. going back to collections, what I love during Sam's presentation during the keynote that we got to see um, the spotlight on widgets mm -hmm. of like collection, you know, the Google Play has a series of widgets and collections can be widgets that you can access from your home screen. Um, you know, maybe it'll be widget of the week when it rolls out. We'll see. <laughs> but like, I thought that was oh, pretty did cool. did you hear? He said mm -hmm. widgets are just a start. Yeah, like yeah. They're yeah. exploring other ways yeah. to you know, surface collections to users. Well, and that's really, and that's really what it was. A lot of the conversations that we had with folks here at Google during this event, dur during this great day that they, they hosted for us was around how, and we talked about amongst ourselves, how Google Play has really just become this utility that you go to get apps and you don't really spend a lot of time in. And honestly, I know, like, I know I should read reviews and look at, but it's overwhelming, right? Like there's a lot of information yeah. in there. So like I'm in Google Play to go download an app or go to update an app and that's it. I was gonna say. And 99% of the time you already know what app exactly. you're gonna download. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or it's just gonna update for you. Yes. And you, Why has it updated? That just yeah. reminded me, yeah. like I had this flashback of, I don't know how many years ago, how often I would go into Google Play and yeah. check my updates tab. It'd be like, yeah. oh, you know, just <laughs> waiting for that app that I use yeah. every day to have an update because yeah. I wanted to see what the new thing was in it. And, and I don't do that much anymore. And the, the marketplace has become so, I mean, like they said, one of those facts they shared during Sam's keynote was that there are a, a thousand plus new apps launched every day. Right, and so yeah. it, it, which is just so it's hard. How do you separate what is worth looking at? And like, what we don't know what the next Instagram will be. We don't yeah. know what the next big app that that everyone's got to go use will be. So hopefully, you know, some of the stuff they're putting in there have you you know use play as more of a catalog to browse and discover and that sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, interesting. What for you, Michelle? I'm curious. Is the is, is the collections the thing? Like, if you had to pick one thing that you were kind of like, all right, it's this the gaming. Is, I think it's the is it the, it's gaming? the gaming, the, the yeah. game changer. That's not a game changer for me, but the <laughs> it's just I just find it so amusing. The new ability to play multiple games at the same time yeah. on the PC. So you're just grinding. Like, everyone there, <laughs> everyone there is like, oh my. Like, or, like, it was kind of funny, right? Yeah. It was a funny moment. I think people like actually chuckled at that moment. Yeah. Like, I chuckled internally, and like, I can't see myself doing that. But I absolutely know. Oh, there's guarantee. a lot of gamers. Oh, I, I who know. Are like, oh, yes, I know. Anyway. I know specific if you people who would do that. Four X your time yeah. across like yeah. four different games. I mean, if you're grind. doing, if you're doing, yeah, if you're doing a grinding <laughs> game while, like, so the example they had was tight. What Clash of Clans? Clash of Clans, Clash of Clans and Disney Speedstorm, which is a racing game. So if you're sitting there waiting for your castle to build or whatever, I'm sorry if you like that game, but whatever you do, and then you're killing time by racing Mickey and doing other stuff like I, I, I know I know personally know people who will use that. Yeah. And that's yeah. pretty cool. So yeah, um, yeah it's cool. And so me, and and actually yeah. now that I think about it, maybe that inspires them to actually play those games on a PC. Maybe. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. that's a question that's come up on the show many times. It's like, okay, great, you can do this, but are a lot of people like, is that really something that people are seeking out to do in large numbers? Right. That could be a reason why people yeah. do it. I haven't heard anybody else offering that. Like that that is yeah. talk about a differentiator. So yeah. Um, yeah. cool. So if you you want to get up to speed on all the amazing stuff that Sam announced uh, here at Google for Google Play? Go to AndroidFaithful.com. Michelle did an amazing write-up of it. 
Um, so it's all there for you. Um, you can get all the details on the website. So Yeah, uh, indeed. AndroidFaithful.com. Patreon.com slash AndroidFaithful if you want to support there. That's another way you can do it. Um, emails, but, emails your questions at contact at AndroidFaithful.com. Um, we love to hear from you. Uh, follow us on social, do all the fun stuff. And of course, we want to thank our friends at Google uh, yeah. for helping making this happen, not only for inviting us to the awesome event, but giving us some time with Sam and, and allowing us to record on there, uh, uh, here in the office and everything like that. We're getting we're getting to be familiar in the Google offices. Yeah. It's kind of good. <laughs> we keep meeting people and they, they, they're referencing episodes. I'm like, oh, they're, they're listening. They're yeah. watching. <laughs> they're <Yeah>. reading. <laughs> you, get, you get it all the time. <laughs> so. They're like, well, they're looking at Michelle going, yeah. he's the guy that's always breaking the, the <laughs> news on the stuff that we're doing behind the scenes. Uh, anyways, right, thank so you so much for watching we'll, and for listening. Thank you to Google for the invite. We're back to a regular show next week. When we'll be back, uh, we'll be all together again. Um, right. So until next time, we'll see you. And thanks for listening and watching. We are the Android Faithful. Faithful. Faithful.